Hello, my name is Denisel Tolentino and I am doing a neurological and skin exam on my patient. This is my roommate, Shirley. Uh, so I'm first going to begin by doing a mental status exam. So I'm just going to ask you a couple of questions. Um, hello, do you know your name? Yes. <laughs> what is your name? Shirley Yang. Okay, and do you know what day it is today? Pretty sure it's the 19th. Okay, April 19th and what is the year? 2018. Okay, and do you know where you are? Yes. Where are you? Never mind. Okay, great. So she uh, passed the mental status exam. Um, she has, she is alert, wait, alert and oriented to person, place, and time. And so the next part of the exam is I'm going to test your cranial nerves two through twelve. Um, first, I'm going to start by uh, testing cranial nerve two, testing for pupil constriction. So I'm going to use a flashlight here, and I'm going to have you look straight ahead. I'm going to test your pupil constriction here. Okay, and the other side. Great, and then now just follow my finger. Okay, so um, her eyes are um, Perla. They are um, equal, round, and reactive to light, and they accommodate as well. So next I'm gonna test um, the other cranial nerves, um, three, four, and six. So I'm gonna do the six uh, cardinal gazes test. So go ahead and have your head still, but follow my finger with your eyes. So here I'm looking for a little bit of nystagmus to see if there's any um, oscillations in her eyes. And so far she just had a little bit of nystagmus on the extreme lateral gazes, which is a normal response, so that's fine, that's great. So cranial nerves three, four, and six are intact. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is cranial nerve five, which is, which is the trigeminal nerve. So I'm gonna ask you to just clench your teeth for me. Can you do that? Great, and then, um, so it's both a, a sensory and uh, motor nerve, so I'm actually going to grab a cotton wisp here. Go ahead and close your eyes, Shirley. Let me know if you can feel this. I'm going to tap a little cotton wisp and let me know if you feel it, okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so her sensory part of the trigeminal nerve is intact. And next I'm going to do the facial nerve, so um, I'm going to ask you to just smile for me and raise your eyebrows. Great, so it's very symmetric and even so her facial nerve is intact. So next I'm going to test the vagus nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, so normally uh, in an outpatient setting I would have a tongue depressor. So this will be my tongue depressor. Um, I'm going to have you open your mouth for me, stick your tongue out and say ah. ah. And then I would press down and test for a gag reflex and then ah. <laughs> And so I would test for a gag reflex, which is intact as well. So glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve is intact. So next I'm going to test the vagus nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, so normally uh, in an outpatient setting, I would have a tongue depressor. So this will be my tongue depressor. Um, I'm going to have you open your mouth for me, stick your tongue out, and say ah. ah. And then I would press down and test for a gag reflex. And then ah. <laughs> okay. And so I would test for a gag reflex, which is intact as well. So glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve is intact. As she said, ah, her uvula went up um, symmetrically and um, it was midline as well. So, okay, now we're gonna do the spinal accessory muscle or the uh, nerve, which is cranial nerve 11. So first, I'm gonna put some resistance on your shoulders so I can ask you to just shrug your shoulders for me. Great. And then try to turn your head against my hand. I'm going to put some resistance there. Great. I'm going to do the other side. So cranial nerve 11 is intact. And the last one is cranial nerve 12, which is hypoplossal. All I need you to do is stick your tongue out like this. Okay, tongue is midline. It's not moving. It's in place. So her hypoplossal nerve is intact. So that concludes the cranial nerve exam. I'm now going to test the rest of the, um, continue the rest of the neurological. So I'm going to test your cerebellar function. So I'm going to have you walk heel to toe. Go ahead and stand up and um, just kind of walk heel to toe, one foot in front of the other. Okay, she's nice and balanced and even. Um, she's not swaying, so that part is intact. And then go ahead and come back here. And if you could just face this way, keep standing. And have um, hands by your side, feet shoulder width, uh, shoulder width apart, and just close your eyes. So right here is the Romberg test. I'm testing to see uh, she has positional sense intact to see if she's 
able to stay balanced. Normally I would have her do this for about 20 to 30 seconds, um, but she uh, does have balance intact. So she does pass the Romberg test. You can go ahead and sit down. Thank you. And so the next part, I'm gonna test your coordination and skilled movements. So the first thing I'm gonna do is have you follow me. We're gonna do the rapid alternating hand movements. So you can do like this, this, and then touch your chest. And then just kind of do that as fast as you can. And then a little faster. So she's very smooth and very coordinated, accurate. Um, so she does have coordination. So the next part of the coordination and skilled movements test, I'm gonna have you do the finger to nose test. So I'm gonna have you tap your nose and then follow my finger, but I'm gonna be moving my finger around. So go ahead and tap your nose, touch my finger, tap your nose again. Okay, tap your nose, tap your nose again. Great. So she's able to follow my finger and still tap her nose. So she does um, have that intact as well. So the next part of the exam, I'm gonna be testing the sensory part, uh, the first of which is the spinal thalamic tract. So I'm going to do a test where if you, to see if you can distinguish between um, a sort of pointed end and then a dull end. So it's like sharp or dull. So this will be my sharp end, this is the tip of the pen, and then my dull will be the flat part of the knife. So um, go ahead and roll your sleeves up and then close your eyes. And then let me know if you feel sharp or dull. One more. <laughs> sharp. Okay. Dull. And then the second part will be light touch. I'm going to be doing the same thing, but just sort of wisping, um, sort of touching your arm with the cotton whisk and just let me know if you can feel it. So go ahead and close your eyes. Yes. 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 Okay, great. So light touch, she's able to distinguish light touch and then between sharp and dull. So her spinal thalamic check. The second part of the sensory is going to be testing your posterior column. Um, I'm going to do what's called the graphesthesia test. I'm going to have you put your hand out and then I'm going to be drawing a number on your palm with your eyes closed and just let me know what number that is. Okay. Go ahead and close your eyes. Four. Okay. And so I did draw four and um, she got the four right so she did pass that exam. So the next part of the sensory portion of the neurological exam um, for the posterior column is the kinesthesia test. Um, so I'm basically going to be moving your finger up and down. You can also do this with the, the big toe, your great toe. But I'm going to have you close your eyes. I'm going to have you tell me if um, you can tell if your finger is going to be pointing up or down. Hold your palm up for me and close your eyes. And then I'm not going to be touching any of the other fingers here. So let me know if it's, being, it's pointing up or down. Down. So she passed the kinesthesia uh, test. So next I'm gonna do uh, testing her motor function. I'm gonna test for pronator drift. So go ahead and put your arms out for me, palms facing up and straight out and go ahead and close your eyes. And so I'm testing for pronator drift here. I'm gonna put my little items down. So I'm gonna have her do this for about 20 to 30 seconds. And if she does have pronator drift, her arms will start to slowly drift down. But as you can see, she's holding them nice and still and steady even with her eyes closed so uh, she does not have pronator drift. So thank you. And um, as I did the exam, I was watching to see if she had any extra movements, any ticks, any fasciculations, any chorea, and I didn't notice any, so um, she's negative for that as well. Um, so the next part is gonna be the reflexes. I actually don't have a rubber mallet with me, so I'm gonna insert a clip of me doing it on campus with an actual uh, mallet, but it'll be with a different patient. Okay, so the first part is going to be testing his um, biceps reflex. I'm just going to tap right here. Okay. And now I'm going to be testing the brachioradialis reflex. So I'm just going to hold you up here. I'm going to strike right here. Okay. And then this is supposed to move up. Oh. Okay, so his bicep reflex um, the, and the brachioradialis are intact. Um, next, I'm going to do the triceps reflex. So I'm going to have you, I'm going to hold up right here. And then I'm just going to strike here, okay? Oh, great. Uh, next, I'm going to do the patellar reflex here. So go ahead and hang. Oh, you're still really tall. Okay. I'm going to strike right in this depression right here. 
Great, so that's intact. Um, and then next I'm going to do the Achilles reflex. So go ahead and sit on that chair right there. So I'm gonna strike right here. Okay, and so I saw his foot, his foot move up. Go ahead and have a seat right up here again. The last one I'm gonna do is the plantar reflex here, um, but uh, just for easier purposes, I'm not gonna have him take off his shoe. But normally you would have a shoe off and socks off and then I'd be striking or I would be kind of drawing a line from here, kind of up here around his toes. And a normal response would have his um, toes curl in. The abnormal response would be the uh, toes fanning out. So we wouldn't want that. So after I tested reflexes, um, I am gonna go on to do skin and nails. So I'm gonna look at you overall, look at your color, which is appropriate for your, cl your cultural background. I'm gonna test for temperature and moisture so your skin is warm and dry. I'm gonna be using the back of my hands to do that since it's a little more sensitive. And then I'm looking to see if there is any edema present. So she has no edema present on her arms. I'd also be looking at her um, lower extremities here, which there aren't any, but if there were, you'd be testing for any pitting by um, depressing on the skin, but she has none, so I don't need to do that. And um, to also see if there's any tenting to see if she has any dehydration by pinching the skin, and there's no tenting present, so, because it, it doesn't stay up, so. And then I'm also gonna be looking at her hands here and her nails, looking at the shape and the contour. It's a normal shape, they're clean, they're well-groomed. Um, there's no sign of any cyanosis or anything. I'm gonna do um, what's called the capillary refill test. So I'm gonna be pinching her finger and there is color return uh, less than three seconds. So she's having good perfusion there. Also for skin, I would be looking for to see if there's any rash, any petechiae, any bruising, any lesions. Um, which I don't see any, I'll, um, I don't see any 